In the past one year, bullying in schools, especially here in Lagos, has for most parts dominated media headlines. There have been casualties in the form of lives lost, reputations sullied, and a violated future for quite a number of budding academic talent. With the authorities currently working to secure justice for the victims, many are asking how much lessons have been learned. But it's not been doom and gloom as there's at the moment an initiative to leverage fun events and workshops to promote empathy and kindness in children and families as part of the clarion call for anti-bullying advocacy. We're now being joined by the brain behind that effort, Alex Asogwa, better known as Alex Unusual, a multi-brand influencer, filmmaker, creative writer, model, content creator, and lifestyle vlogger. Good to see you, Alex. Almost, you know, twisted my tongue with all the hats <laughs> <laughs> that you're wearing. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Of course, it's a very serious um, issue when it comes to bullying. But before we go into the events that you're, you know, putting together, which is, which I think it's, it's great anyway, um, why would you say that we're seeing an upsurge when it comes to bullying? Not just in cases of, you know, student to student, but we also see cases where teachers also bully students. Why is that? Why do you think that's happening? I think, um, rec I don't know if I'll say recently, but most of us have been trained or we're being trained to go in to see it as a part of life. So it's really not something that people take so serious. I know some parents that have spoken to and they're like, oh, it's just for the kids. And then some people go, oh, it's really not my business. It's never anybody's business until it happens to your kid. So everyone is waiting for it to be a personal experience before they talk about it. And until we start to talk about these things without waiting for it to get to us, it would never reduce. All right, Alex, what about the parents and guardians of these uh, victims of uh, the bullies? Are you also focusing on them as well? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. I am starting a company that does all of that, where people can bring like children that are being bullied and children that they feel are bullies, first take them through guidance and counselling, and if they need to see like a child psychologist and all of that. But I also feel like some of these parents need to go through therapy. Their parents that have bullies as children, that have no idea mm. that their children are bullies. And when you call them to schools to report, they would still take the side of their child because they have no idea. Some of these people were probably bullied growing up and they see their child as being defensive. Yeah. Some of these people were bullies and they feel like it's okay for your child to be like that. They call it strength. These days when people have bad characters, they call it strength. Oh, she's really strong, she's a strong mm. woman. So. I think most of these parents actually need to be spoken to as well. And that is why this event is for both parents, teachers, and children. Mm. I, I, I'm curious um, when it comes to, because I've seen cases, you know, like in case of, you know, Karen Hapok and, you know, Sylvester or Romani, which I'm sure you're very familiar yes. with, where the school is, um, has, it, it, it appears as though the school is, you know, somewhat covering up what's happening with yes. the children. So how are you able to liaise with schools where, you know, it looks like they might be, they might be covering up um, for the bullies? There's a, uh, that's a very tough question because I've realized that with this event, I've had lots of difficulties speaking to some schools. I think some of them feel like if their school is actively involved in something that has to do with anti-bullying, it probably means they have a lot of bullies mm. in their school. So when I bring these kind of opportunities to them, and oh, I'm inviting your school, some of them will go, are you saying that we have bullies? in our schools. So yes, the school has a very um, huge part to play. I know some schools I've gone to and I see some things that they put on the walls, or oh, if you bully, you go home, do not do this and do not do that. It really just takes talking to these people and getting them to understand, talking to the school owners and talking to the parents that have children in these schools, people that are part of the PTA committees. And then it's a gradual process. It's never really easy because these schools would never really agree that they need something like this. Everybody feels like our teachers are enough to teach this, but really some teachers are actually the bullies. It's a gradual process, as you said, and it's like even a drop in the ocean because when you take a good look at it, bullying itself, they take a cue from societal anomalies and yes. what's happening in society. Yes. So beyond that, how do you think you're able to take this message of uh, you know, uh, your advocacy uh, beyond the school uh, arena? I know that I am looking to work with the government. Mm. If I know it's going to be very difficult because some of our government officials, some of their children are bullies mm. and some of our government officials are bullies as well. Oh. So it's going to be very difficult working with all these people. But I know that 
if you give me a microphone and tell me to go to the street and stand right now and start mm. to talk to people on the street, I will do that. I really just want people to get to hear about anti-bullying. So aside having an event like this, I'm going to different schools. I, I had this school-to-school -school tour that I was doing in 2019, then we had COVID. So mm. I have school-to-school -school tours. I have many other events that are coming up. And I know that Nigerians will not really want to come and sit down in a boring environment to talk about bullying, which is why it's always going to be a festival. It's always going to be something fun. When I come to your school, I'm not just coming to sit down and talk to you. We'll have fun and play. But yes, we need to talk about this. So I'll take it to different places mm. outside the country as much as possible. More power to you as well. Um, but I'm also, I think I, I am concerned, I'll admit, I'm concerned about when I'm concerned about this issue because, you know, I know what bullying can do to one's mental health. Yes. And <laughs> we're a country who, that, has, that has really done poorly when it comes to addressing mental health. Yeah. So I'm wondering how you're able to, if, if, if you've been able to balance this out when it comes to addressing that aspect. Because those who have, you know, been survivors of, of bullying and then they're in schools where, or we're in a country even that even criminalizes attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. To even show you that we don't have that full understanding yeah, yes. of, of mental health or prioritizing it. How are you striking that balance between this bullying aspect on one spectrum and then and the mental, mental health? health? Yes. Well, for the topics that we have, people go to the website to check. The topics that we have on this particular event is not just bullying. I mean, we have Frank Edo taking the bully, the bullied, and the bystander. Mm -hmm. But then there is um, a book class that um, 21st century parenting, work-life balance. And that still checks the mental health of these parents. There is good for you and not for me, which is for children and how they want to see their friends and how they want to do. All these things are things that affect the mental health of these children. There is... Um, someone that's coming to take children on emotional intelligence that's still checking the mental part. So there are lots of topics that are there. I am taking Mastering the Art of Parenting, the parent and child conversation, and people, most people say, oh, she's not the parent. How is she taking that class? But I know some things that we're missing, my mom and I, and I know that some other parents don't have to miss this, and I know that if my mom had been able to do these things, if some parents are able to do that, we would be, or children would be more responsive, thereby helping their mental health. So there are lots of topics that are there that are still focused on the mental health as we still have others focused on bullying. It's still on related issues here. We have children growing up in a social media and screen dominated oh, yes. world. So <laughs> what are the implications <laughs> on parenting? And it's still, you know, still linked to what we've been talking about so far. So I know when we had um, some cases of some videos that surfaced online yeah. or some things that when the school parents went, oh, I would never want to see my child on the internet. I'm going to seize your phone until you're going to the university. And I'm like, I don't think that's the best way to do this because whether you're with them or you're not with them, they would still come across phones in schools. And cyberbullying is one part of bullying that everybody has accepted. We just name it or tag it trolls. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're trolls. Mm -hmm. And then they tell you, they're just trolling you, forget it. Mm -hmm. See, this... <laughs> It goes back to the mental health we've been talking about yeah. as well, because people have been seriously yes. hurt by this. Yes, yes. You, could, you could just drop a small comment, oh, your dress is not fine, but you don't even know what this person has gone through to put this outfit together. The person is really waiting to just come out and hear, you look lovely. People on social media don't really even take any, yeah. they don't, they really do not care. So yes, we're speaking to parents, it's still one of the topics that we're having on how to balance the social media and your child's life in a way to cope cyberbullying because even the children of five six and all of that they will still get to a stage where everybody gets to use phone and if you're using phone and you're on the internet it's either you're here or here you're either being bullied or you're either one of those very popular people or you're one of those people that are not popular that just feel like oh you need to talk and just other people or you're one of those people that will stay there and try to like oh what you said was really harsh or what you said we would address all of that mm. and i feel like in time we would get to a place where this bullying will probably be like eight twenty percent because if you check in nigeria there's really no anti-bullying policy, very painful, mm. but that's how life is right now. And even speaking out uh, becomes a problem as well, even for it the is. victims. Indeed. It is, because I know when um, Sylvester Romani's case mm. came mm. up, I was very pained. I, know I cried for days. I didn't know this child, but I know a lot of children in Doha, and yeah. I, I chat with them. And I know some parents in my estate that had children that knew a lot about this case. Mm. I tried to speak to those kids, and their parents just go out and they're like, Alex, I love you so much. If it was something else, I would let go. I would not let my child talk about this. And I'm like, but your parents, 
if you had said something earlier, and that's why we need to master the art of conversation with our children, yeah. because it doesn't need to happen to your child, but your child knows that it has happened to his or her friend. If you're able to have these conversations with your children, they would come home and tell you, mommy, this happened to a child. You can go to the school. It, sometimes in secondary school, we call it buying case. Mm -hmm. But I know that I am that kind of mom that would go to a school because another child was bullied. And maybe the child's parents is not aware or the child couldn't say anything about it. Mm -hmm. My child told me I would be there to fight for that child. If more parents can speak up on things that they've heard happen to other children, I don't think it will get to their own children as well. Mm -hmm. I, I now want to hear everything about your event. Date, time, how do you participate? <laughs> because it sounds, um, uh, you know, amazing. Huh. Unusual Fest is an anti-bullying family fun fest. So it's for children, their parents, their guardians, teachers, youths. It's for everybody. There are different classes, different workshops for everyone. So the first day is more workshops. Then we have a candle making class. After that, we have Bob Scardini for magic. The second day is more fun and then Timida Kolo's workshop. So we're having sip and paint, dance classes, and basket craft making. Really, it's just learning, having fun, and still learning. So even when you're having fun, you're dancing, you're still learning something. Mm. Sip and paint, you're painting, it's fun, but you're learning something. Basket making is fun. The first day, we have um, some facilitators. We have a girl, Bill Chendu. We have Kate Henshaw, Frank Edo, Dr. Larry Lushola, Dr. Me Cora, Eko Edewa. I'll be there as well. There is an emotional specialist. It's just a fun and education-packed event. And then the tickets are available at www.unusualfest.com. There are some flyers on my page. Or you could call 070-4590-7746. No. I'm giving you basically all the details. Yes, you, okay, you, you have given. But then again, um, is this the first time you're doing something as deep as this? Or, no. And what has the response been over time, the ones you've, you've been doing so So the far? first one I had was, aside to the ones that I did in secondary school as mm -hmm. a student, because I know I've gone through all the stages of bullying, I had a stage where I was really bullied. And then in response, I became a bully for a while. They, they called my mom. And she wasn't that one to come and defend me. She noticed it. She took me and then she warned me about it. And then we had the point where I am now, where I defend people that are being bullied. I had some events in school where we just come together and talk about these things. Then I know in 2019, I had um, an etiquette class with the Englishman in Nigeria. And that was because I realized that some of the things that children pick on, uh, they pick on people that are not really that confident. So I just felt like, okay, give them etiquette class. The etiquette it has a lot of things in it. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you greet, things that, it's just a whole lot. I really wanted them to have more insights and education on these things. So when they go back to their school, their, their confidence is increased. But then after that, I realized that it's, it's way more than etiquette. There are lots of things. And the response was very okay. I mean, I know I had, it was for two days as well. Mm -hmm. I had space for 40 children per day. I took 80 kids, but I had about 624 entries for that first one. Then we had COVID. I couldn't do that again. And I, I had some schools that were inviting me to come and speak to our kids before COVID. So now this is the first time that I'm comfortable enough bringing children and parents in the second space. And I said I to make it bigger okay. and actually focus on the main thing that I want to talk about. Fantastic. Do you foresee a time where those that might not be too, you know, financially buoyant might be able to you know, come for or attend an event as, as worthwhile as yours? Well, people that are not financially brilliant are coming for this one as well because I have fans that are not in the country. I have friends that just have two children, but they bought tickets for 20 kids, 30 kids. And I'm not giving these tickets out to people that can afford it. I'm giving it to those that cannot. So there are lots of people that have gotten tickets for free and are going to be there are we invited? Yes, no, you're invited. Kids. Yes, I, I, yes, I, I, I you're very invited. I was going to invited. ask, um, you, you know, throughout uh, your course of doing all of this, uh, what about professional uh, handling so in terms of, of psychologists, you know, and other professionals in that kind of uh, scenario? Do you also, uh, you know, invite them over to, yes. to have a word with, with the I children? I do. Mm. I do invite all of them. I have some of them that are also coming for this event. And I have some of them that I also work with because I mentioned earlier that I'll be starting a company that deals with all of this. And I know that there are some kids that parents will bring to me that just need guidance and counseling. Mm. There are some kids that will need to bring in a, a psychologist to speak to. There are some kids that would need a lawyer because there is a case that needs to go yeah. to court. So there are lots of people that I'm going to be, lots of professionals that I'm going to be working with on this. I know for this event, 
I have a um, hospital that's coming to do free eye test for everybody, free mm -hmm. dental check for everybody at the event. And there are lots of medical practitioners that I'm working with on this right. project. Very good uh, one there, uh, Alexandra Sogwa. Or Alex, unusual, yes. as you call it, a filmmaker, model, content creator, and all of the above. I'd like to thank you for joining us. Thank you for thank having you. me. Good to have you.